So if your speed ramps are looking like this, and not like this, then you're in the right place to learn how to make a natural looking, buttery smooth speed ramp. The holy grail to this effect is this button here. But first, you need to understand how to use its power. Look at these two transitions here and tell me which one you prefer. Alright, so you probably picked the one on the left to be the one that's better, but if you can't tell why it's better, then let me help you out. Let's play the video and pause right in the middle of the transition. As you can see when we pause it, this one has more... butter. I mean, blur. And that's one of the keys to making these speed ramps really smooth. But that's just a part of it, so let me show you how to do the rest of this. Starting with the shot. Now the key to a good speed ramp starts with when you shoot the video because editing can only do so much if you don't film it correctly. Now I have a fly cam and they are generally really hard to keep steady. They just move all over the place. But if you have anything like an electronic gimbal or a drone, these will normally work a lot better. I think one of the most important things to keep in mind when you're filming speed ramps is that the motion needs to follow through between shots. So if in one clip you're doing a push in, in the second clip that you train transition to, you also need to be doing a push-in. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you'll get something that ends up looking like this. This has all the right things to do the speed ramp, except for the motion not following through. So the more accurate you can follow through with the motion, the smoother the shot is going to look. So another thing to keep in mind when you're filming is that you want to think about if you want to speed ramp into the shot and then out of the shot. If you want to speed ramp in and out of the shot, you need an entry ramp and an exit ramp out of the shot, which means you need more footage on either side of the main part that you're trying to show in the clip. And this extra footage allows you to slow down the footage to come into time with the main part of your footage. And then you have the exit ramp footage, which has enough time to slowly speed up the footage and then continue the speed ramp. So now that I've shown you how to shoot the footage and things to consider when you're taking the footage, let's jump into Premiere and I'll actually show you how to put this together and how to make this happen. Okay, so we are in Premiere now, and the first thing that you want to do is just create the sequence as usual. I am just going to go ahead and import the footage, and then I'll bring the first clip into the timeline. Now it is possible to speed ramp in Premiere Pro, but I actually don't like doing it in Premiere Pro, and the reason why is because if you open it up in After Effects, you have so much more control over how it looks, over the timing of the speed ramp, over how it flows in and out of the speed ramp, and you're gonna get a much better result from just using After Effects. And it's not that hard to open it up either. So all you have to do is if you're in Premiere here, um, you right click and then just replace with After Effects composition. When you click that, it'll open After Effects. Just save your file anywhere and then open it up. Now, once you're here, you have all the footage in here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you'd probably want to use Warp Stabilizer when you're speed ramping to stabilize the footage even more, uh, but you can't use any sort of time manipulation and Warp Stabilizer at the same time. So the way to get around that is you'll apply your stabilization first. So Warp Stabilizer. Oh my God, 3000 frames. Okay, uh, we're not going to stabilize the whole clip actually because that is going to take too long. Oh no, don't crash! Oh no! Okay, let's try that again. Open it up in, in After Effects again. Okay, now, first step you want to do is find the section that you're going to use first and clip it down to that. I'm going to use this and I'm probably going to speed ramp all the way through past that little shack. So we got here. So delete all that. Now you want to apply Warp Stabilizer to this. 1000 frames, that's a bit better. Now that you have Warp Stabilizer on, like I said, you can't have any sort of time remapping or time warping with Warp Stabilizer. So the first thing you need to do is pre-compose this layer. And when you pre-compose something, it's the same thing as nesting something in Premiere Pro. It basically just packages everything you've done into one layer, like that. And now this layer doesn't have any sort of time remapping properties. So now that you've done that, go to layer, time, and enable time remapping. Now, each one of these dots here is a value of time. Each one of these dots here is a timestamp. So if you go up here and I move it forward a bit, 
Now there's a timestamp here for 5 seconds and here there's a timestamp for 0. So in this 1 second here, 5 seconds are going to pass which means it's going to appear to be going faster. So that's the basis of how we're going to do speed ramping. Now let me just start again so I can show you. Now you got the two times at the start and end of the clip. Now what you want to do is just find the main part of this video that you want to show uh, and then just keyframe it. So if I want to speed up here and then slow down as it's going through this gate here or maybe it'll pass it and then s slow down here then I'll add a keyframe here so that what I want for it to do is to speed up and then slow down here and then it'll go slow across here and then it'll speed up again here. So I've added a keyframe here and here and this part in here is the main part of the video. These two points can't move away from each other or close together otherwise it's going to change the speed of the clip. So once you've set the keyframes for this what you want to do is just highlight all these ones and then move it closer to the first keyframe. So like we said before, this keyframe here is a timestamp from over here at 20 seconds and we're moving it closer to zero, which means this section here is going to be 20 seconds worth of footage in about two seconds. And that's how you get the entry part of the speed ramp. Okay, and now if we play it back, you can see it passes this keyframe here at the same time because we haven't moved this timestamp closer. So let's move it in closer. And then if we play it again, you'll see that it speeds up here, slows down here and speeds up again. So this is the entry ramp and this is the exit ramp. Now this looks bad. As it is right now, it looks terrible. But I need to explain so you understand um, this graph here. And this graph is how you're going to make this smoother. So to get to there, you click a timestamp here and then you go into the graph and then it'll bring this up. And this is how you make the speed ramp smooth. The steeper the curves are here, the faster the clip is going to go. And as you can see, if I play the clip, you can see this steep part here is the faster bit of the clip. And then it'll get to here and slow down. And then it'll get to here and speed back up again. Now the reason why this video at the moment is so like stop and start instead of the speed ramps is because these have really sharp angles at them. So what you want to do in this graph is try to take these angles out. So these angles where it's really sharp and there's a corner to them, that's when you're going to get that bump in a time lapse where it's just going to look like it stops. So select one of them and hit this button over here. This will smooth it out and give you a little handle to play with and just grab this and pull it. And the more you can pull it, the more you can sort of make it more of a gradient to make it a bit smoother. So if I bring it out here, you'll see even if I play it back now, it'll still be smoother. And so you can see that it actually comes in and then slows down until it gets to normal speed. And then when it hits this corner here, it'll jump up again. So if we hit this corner here and we flatten out that corner as well, and that would be this button here, then you can see it'll start smoother and it'll also go to the exit ramp smoother as well. And the exit ramp. And that's how you get a good speed ramp. Now there's one more step that I want to show in this speed ramp to make it extra buttery. This is where we're going to take a slice of butter and put it into our clip and make it buttery smooth. So you select your layer, you go to effect, time, and force motion blur. And what that's going to do, as you can see just there, if I take that off and then on and off and on, you can see that it's adding blur to the clip and it's adding blur based on how much it's speeding up. So if you have a really fast speed ramp, it's gonna blur even more and it's gonna look really smooth. So this is how everyone gets their blurry speed ramps that where it really blends in nicely to the next clip is you use a motion blur. So if you want more blur, bring in the clips closer and the faster that speed ramp at the end of it's gonna go and then the more blur you're going to get out of it. So you bring it closer and as you can see, there's more blur in that now. Now the only thing with motion blur is that when it gets to the end of the clip, it actually become, it stops being blurry because the motion has stopped. When the motion stops, there's no more motion blur for it to add. So what you wanna do is just make sure that you're actually cutting it cutting the clip before it becomes not blurry as you can see here the last clip it's not blurry anymore and when you want to transition to the next clip when it's blurry 
And then if you want to do a speed ramp into another clip, like I said, um, then you get the next clip, you add it in, and you do the exact same thing. So you do the speed ramp, just like we did. So I'm going to do that now. So I've brought the clip in, I've added the time remapping, and now we jump to the graph. We take these corners off like that. We smooth the corners out. Just play it to have a look, and it should look real smooth. So that's the second part of the speed ramp, like that. And now that we've done that, we're going to add our butter into this. Effect, time, force motion blur, and then that's going to add the motion blur right there. Now, this is actually a good demonstration of the motion blur. So if you go back, you can see that you have these sticks here, or these trees, not sticks. Um, and then if I turn the motion blur off, they're very clear. But if I turn it on, it completely blurs them. So now that that's done, let's save that and let's go back into Premiere. There we go. Speed ramped with butter. So that is how you make those buttery, smooth, super nice speed ramp transitions. As I said, the main part that makes this really nice, it's the graph and knowing how to use it and adding the motion blur. And it took me a long time to learn this and to figure it out myself. So hopefully this helps and you can skip that learning curve. If you want more tutorials, then subscribe. If you have any more questions, leave them down below.